Welcome back to the Black and Gold Report. We're now joined by head wrestling coach O.T. Johnson. Coach, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Well, before we talk about this season, let's revisit the 14-15 campaign for the Braves. Four wrestlers qualified for the NCAA Division II National Championships, and the Black and Gold finished in a tie for 11th, with Daniel Owenby claiming his second straight national championship at 141 pounds. What are some of the things that you remember most about last season? I think just having those uh, four young men have an opportunity to end their careers the way they wanted to at the national tournament says a lot about where our program is and where we hope to be this year again as we look to uh, you know send up another senior class in hopes of having all those guys qualify for the NCAA tournament. Uh, one of the great things I, I enjoyed about being with those four guys out in uh, St. Louis was you know how together they were, um, how, how they, they took every advantage of the moment. Um, I think uh, you know, for guys that work all their lives to get to that position, uh, um, the reality is, you know, um, the glory and the glamour was never going to be there as far as, you know, we're not a big glamour sport. So just to see those guys be able to culminate their career at the national tournament was very special and to see them all enjoy it together and to have the opportunity to come home with, a, you know, a, a 11th place finish at the NCAAs was really uh, gratifying for me as a coach to see those guys go out that way. Well, you've obviously got some pretty big holes to fill in your lineup this season with the graduation of all four of those national championship or yes, national championship qualifiers. Who are some of the veterans on your team that you're looking to provide leadership for the Braves this season? I think uh, having Blaze Shea back in the lineup as a returning All-American from two years ago, registered in last year. He's definitely a guy that took advantage of this last year as he registered it. Uh, did a good job in going to open tournaments and, and really, you know, he, he won 21 matches as a red shirt. So that's that was huge. That let us know that he wanted to make sure when he came back, he didn't just all American again. He got to the top of the podium. We have Stuart Nairdu, who's a fifth-year senior, coming back to uh, end his career the right way. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, another guy, Rich White, um, who's really looking to uh, try to end his career the right way. And uh, we have some other guys in there that we feel really good about. And uh, at the same time, we have some veterans that are not seniors, but you know, guys that have been in the program, seeing how the older guys did did their jobs and. You know, hopefully they learn from it and are able to, uh, you know, take advantage of everything to learn from those guys in the, in, the, in the previous years. Well, let's talk about some of those guys you just mentioned, beginning with uh, Stuart Nadu, who competed at 197 pounds for you over the last three seasons, but will make the huge step over to the heavyweight class this year. Stuart has gained more than 60 pounds during the offseason in order to make this transition. Talk about the strategy he used to bulk up and the kind of commitment it takes from an athlete to do something like that. Food. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> well, I think, I think uh, you know, uh, you, you hear people trying to lose weight all the time, but sometimes it's more difficult. You know, there's a lot more commitment to gaining weight. Uh, I myself had that issue too, but Stewart's done a phenomenal job in being disciplined in his nutrition, you know, not just gaining weight, but gaining the right type of weight. Uh, at the heavyweight weight class, you have to be able to sustain for four to five months and, and you know just putting weight on any type of weight on could be dangerous because you can wear it out over the course of a, a long college season so Stewart's done a good job from the minute we uh, made the decision that he was going to go up he uh, he's been very you know adamant on eating the right things each and every day going to bed with the right amount of nutrition in his body so when he wakes up he's not you know five pounds less than when he went to bed so uh, it takes a lot of discipline and I think all that discipline is going to help Stewart you know make a run for the national tournament and I'll get on the podium that's there so we're really excited about the sacrifices he's made, uh, you know, not to do some of the things he's done the past summer and to stay in the weight room and stay in the kitchen and, and just, uh, you know, do the right things that it's going to take to uh, close his career the way he wants it. Well, you brought in a handful of red shirts and a wealth of newcomers for the 2015-16 season. Who are some of the new guys that you expect to make a significant impact on your team this year? Well, uh, this year we are, our, our incoming class is not as heavy as it has been in the past, so we feel pretty good about our retention from uh, our red shirts from last year and the guys that we have coming in. Uh, I think uh, having um, some guys stick around, uh, um, having, having a smaller incoming class is, is, a, is a testament to our staff and a testament to our, our kids. Uh, you know, some red shirts, that, some guys that are coming off a of red shirt, Josh Watts, he'd be a freshman, a local guy at Lumberton High School. Uh, some of the freshmen we have coming in that we feel good about, Sam Bartram, Dustin Smith, Tyler McCosey. Um, you know, uh, um, Sam Bartram, uh, I'm sorry, uh, um, Andrew Colburn, Brandon Sloop, just to name a few guys that we feel really good about that are going to come in and, and be an immediate impact for us and, and to really help us 
take that next step. You know, we're tired of finish, you know, 11th, and we finished 11th in the last two years, so we want to break into that top 10 and stay there. So we're hoping those guys can uh, continue on with our returners to uh, keep us on that path. All right. Well, we're going to take our next commercial break. When we come back, we're going to continue talking wrestling with head coach O.T. Johnson, so stay tuned. Welcome back to the Black and Gold Report. We're still joined by head wrestling coach O.T. Johnson. Coach, you can usually tell by how successful the upcoming season will be by how hard your team works in the off season. What have you been impressed with so far from your team with the limited amount of time that you've seen them in controlled practices? I think just how the upperclassmen, uh, for the first time uh, in my tenure of involvement with the program, how the upperclassmen have taken the lead. I mean, I think uh, our, our leaders, so to speak, have done a good job of controlling the warm-up and, and really understanding what exactly is going to take for them to be practice ready, um, getting the guys going, getting their minds right, you know, not having the young guys lollygagging around in the warm-up and taking it seriously. Uh, I think that's one thing that's really helped us as coaches kind of see the morale as they're warming up, see what exactly we need to, if we just stick with the practice plan we had going into practice or if we can kind of alter it based on their demeanor. So that's one thing I think uh, it's been really refreshing for, the have, for, the, uh, for us to have our uh, returners, our leaders, really take ownership of the program. I think when you can have that in your program, it really sets the stage and it makes our job easier um, as a staff to really be able to pick out the kids that may need our, our help, our one-on-one -on -one attention more. And when you can get in there myself and get in there, coach can get in there and work with the kids one-on-one -on -one to know that and the guys are still going to get what they need um, because their leaders are taking ownership of the program. So that's been very impressive and we're hoping that continues to sustain throughout the duration of the season. Well, for the first time since the NAIA era of the athletic department, UNCP will compete as a part of a conference. It was announced last month that the Braves will join six other teams in the East Coast Athletic Conference beginning with the 2015-16 schedule. What does something like that mean to the future of your program as well as the experience for your student athletes? I mean, it's a great deal. Uh, I mean, uh, like all the other student athletes, obviously with the uh, exception of football, now our guys can call themselves conference champions. I know it might sound very small, but being a champion for anything, it shows that you have to, one, separate yourself from everybody else you're competing against, whether it's two people or six people. Um, we're willing to uh, take that inaugural ECAC championship and uh, own it. Uh, um, I think uh, our kids now get an opportunity to you know, work towards something as they're preparing for the regional tournament and know that their regular season dual meets are going to mean, not that they didn't mean anything before, but now there's that added incentive. And it also is going to make other coaches not hold guys out. Uh, you know, with every weight class having a uh, conference champion, everyone has to wrestle their best guy, which is going to give us a chance to see the better guys of each team throughout the, uh, the regular season. So we're excited for it. We're going to go out there. We're going to dominate it, and, and we're going we're to take it and make it ours. That's what we do. Well, this will help us segue into the next question, but you have a pretty challenging schedule, including 17 dual meets and the 35th annual Pembroke Classic in November. You have a mix of ECAC matchups thrown in there as well. Talk about the challenges of this year's schedule and some of the meets or events that you're looking forward to. Definitely looking forward to the Pembroke Classic. A uh, great event, our home event, first home event to give our fans a chance to see us all day long. Uh, um, excited about the Wolfpack duels, uh, opportunity to wrestle against Division One competition. Uh, a school like NC State who's coming in, ranked ninth in the country, Division One. So grateful for the opportunity to be able to wrestle those guys. And, and just going back to the Midwest, wrestling at the Midwest Classic, kind of a preseason national tournament. Uh, it gives our guys a good chance to have a two-day weigh-in and kind of see some themes from out in the West and the Midwest that we wouldn't typically see throughout the duration of the season. We get to go up to New York and wrestle uh, uh, Notre Dame College, who's a uh, national champion from two years ago. So it gives us a great opportunity to just give our guys a look from every different angle and every different direction. So we're excited. Um, we put the schedule together not for, to have any guy undefeated with the idea of having stress on his shoulders, you know, come national tournament time. So our guys can get a good, get a good mix of competition. If you're undefeated come uh, late February, you stand a chance of being on the podium or winning national titles. So we put the schedule together with that idea in mind. 
Awesome. Well, with about 30 seconds left, we talk to you and we talk about your your uh, players, but some people we don't highlight are your assistant coaches. You have Rashad Saunders and Chris Naughty coming back as assistant coaches for you. Just um, what does that mean to have two guys that have been here before coming back on staff? Stability. Stability. Like anything in life, uh, I think stability says a lot. Stability means a lot. It means a lot to the kids when they're being recruited by these guys. When they get here to see them here, it, it puts their minds at ease and puts my mind at ease. It allows me to do the things I'm able to do, I want to do to help the program get to where we need to be. Uh, Coach Sonner and Coach Nadi do a great job uh, 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 just, just mixing, it, mixing it up with the kids and myself uh, so we, we can be able to kind of pick and choose where we can put our time. So those guys really, really make our job, my job easier and, and make, they make me look like a genius. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on the show, Coach. Absolutely. And thank you for watching this week's edition of the Black and Gold Report. Until next week, go Braves.